this video should be uh, called what the things you can do with just a lowly dribble but that's not what it's gonna be uh, been out here in the shop quite a while today actually uh, I, I think that uh, I'll share a couple little tidbits with you guys on the 372s as you know I caught these are much higher right here they come up into here well the 390s are flush well I made this one and Kyle saw not flush but just getting there you know and uh, there's his transfers um, I changed the timing just a little bit in this particular saw on the uh, primaries but not the secondaries the primaries open just a little earlier than the secondaries uh, I've been leaning on the primaries more than the secondaries for a while now because it seems like if you go too far with them secondaries it just doesn't it doesn't hurt it, it just doesn't do any good it's just a lot of work for nothing but and most importantly on the primaries I got a slightly steeper angle above the piston for airflow and then the secondaries is more toward the back above the intake and a little shallower by reading the carbon print on the saws that I do this with and I take back apart and uh, I, I I find this I, I'm finding that sweet spot by looking at that carbon print and I'm starting to get some impressions of what I can do better I mentioned in the other video there that uh, the right side primary doesn't flow as much air as the left side primary so I hope oh, I've been opening it up a little bit more and uh, on my test saw we took the cylinder part checked it after running it just a bit and uh, it did straighten it out it's I've got it corrected so that's a little little something but I've noticed that on all of them uh, I just you know what I think it is they lean their exhaust off one way at a little bit of an angle, but it isn't coming out straight. And I think somehow that's taken, uh, it's changing flow across the top of that piston. And uh, another interesting thing in this particular cylinder, uh, it was slightly bowed on one corner. And, well, actually on one side. And I put a straight edge across on this side here. And it wasn't the same as this side, but I got it where it's absolutely square everywhere, finally. And I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I don't know if I can get it where you can look right down them transfers and see them angles. Maybe you can. But you get the idea of what we're trying to accomplish. But actually, what I'm trying to do today is just do a little assembly here. You know, it helps you guys, maybe. Okay. So, here we are. We got, hopefully, all our little pieces. We're going to change the plastic uh, piece right here. You got this little sleeve. That's got to come out. Okay. We just... You just kind of roll that in there, wad it up, pop it in, make sure you have reorientation, which we're right. I'm going to make sure by just putting the carb on, you can see that that'll come up to plastic, you know, the, uh, where the cable comes up through here is lined up. Put that back in. And then what we're going to do is going to put our air horn on. Well, some little plastic sleeves in there for alignment. You can't get them out of them carbs. And the other ones just slide right through. But it is what it is. It's no issue to me.
easier to put together right now, trust me. You get your air horn mounted. I try to tighten everything easy. Get it even. Now remember, all you're trying to do is seal that rubber. You're not trying to twist its guts out. And uh, there we go. I mean, it comes metal to metal. You can see that. Well, like with the plastic ones, if you don't have one of these and you over tighten that, you bow that up right there in the center. Right in this area. You bow that up because it, it, it just it bends like that. Open my clamp up all the way. Okay, we got our clamp opened up all the way. Uh, it goes down, okay, just, but you want, you want room there, you know, you, you don't want that tight, because it's got an inner lip in there. That's got to slide in that groove right here, right there. It's got to slide in that groove. So, your clamp orients down and to the right side of your saw, towards your impulse line. You'll know when you got it on there, it, it'll come up all the way tight right here. And right now is when I tighten that. It's a lot harder to put this together on the saw. You can tilt that up slightly if you want. I'll do it just a little bit. That way, at least you got a prayer of uh, taking your clamp out. If you have to take your carburetor back apart. Uh, we shouldn't have to. There's ways to get in there and fiddle fart around and get it. Now, that's got a, the original clamp has got a furrow that it comes up tight on it. It's uh, that furrow right there. It comes up tight, and I agree with that. That uh, seems to be about right. Now, take my rather inexpensive, I wasn't going to say cheap, mix oil. Get a little bit on my ring. Yeah, I just pour a little of my cat and get it on my ring. A little bit on the piston. And just the film on my cylinder. Don't you don't have to slobber it. If you put a new wrist pin in, do what I did. Oil your wrist pin. You know, the bearing and the wrist pin. Okay. Now, when I tip that upside down, I'm not going to have oil just running out of that. I got just a thin film. Now I got to clean my hands because I got that oil on me. I like using bounty towels, they're the only paper towel I found yet that is uh, lint free which is kind of nice honestly so we don't need this thing anymore a little bit on my finger and I just paint that on 
thin film. You don't need very much. And for those of you that missed it, I use motorcycle engine assembly silicone. That's what I use. This is the problem with uh, having a tube around for a long time. And I tell you, I don't know how many saws you can run. They actually get where they get hard. Rather than, uh, rather than use it up, it just gets hard. It doesn't take very much. Eh? I go around it and kind of smooth it out. Your temptation in these areas here to put a lot is big. Don't do it. Because if you end up taking your saw back apart, you find out you got a massive amount of silicone in the way your transfers. It is what it is, isn't it? Get rid of some of this stuff. Okay. One little thing I was going to show you. When you cut these bridges down here, like this, uh, you know, because they're quite high. I cut them down. Uh, you'll find out because they're thin, they have a hard time without getting big chatter marks. I use a flat file. I level them out with a flat file. A little makes it a little easier on you. Now let's see if I can do this on video. What I do is I pinch my ring and I actually move it that way. I start to front of the, I pinch it and pull it to the rear. I get the front started slightly first and then God's grace. I get the rear started. Okay, so we're ready to just go straight down with it. Okay, right here is where I grab my transfer. Uh, or I mean my impulse line uh, that ends up kind of in the way well I grab that and push it through the hole in the intake rubber where it seals to the body of the saw but, uh, I'm explaining it because I don't want to move my camera today I'm just feeling in that kind of mood and I pull that through Okay, I make sure my fuel line's not obstructed. I don't have anything in the way. And I rather just let it coast down. I don't worry about getting my carbon plates. You got lots of time, folks. You ain't in a hurry right here. All you're trying to do is get that cylinder down, which we got it down. Don't rotate that until that rings all the way in for sure. Uh, it's just a bad idea. And uh, let's see, I'd really like to have my needle nose I was just using a second ago. Get a couple of these in the back. I think at some point we're going to end up doing two or three cameras so you can see all these angles and I'm not there yet. Uh, I do have an editing program on my phone that I'm, I'm learning to work with it. It's called Video Guru. 
for you obsolete dummies like me, I'm not even seating them. I'm not even close. I want to get all four of them in first. I can actually have the saw here running here in a little bit if I wanted to, but I'll give that silicone time to dry. That'll be either this evening or tomorrow. I'll probably come out here and fire it up. See what we got. This is really kind of easy work. It's by the numbers. That's just step to step to step. Okay, I bring them up kitty corner till they're just nicely coming up snug. No tightening actually. Just get them all where they're touching even. And then I start just a little bit. Retrace my steps. Okay. Now this is where I finish it off. So it's pretty it's pretty much three steps or four. Yeah, that's tight enough. Okay, something to make it easier, because I know you did the same thing that I do. Yeah, you have to fiddle around with, uh, there's a little rubber strap with two little hooks in that, uh, back of that, uh, uh, air horn on the bottom that's got to go over that strap. Well... If you take it apart wrong, you break them little hooks. Not a big deal. Put it together wrong, you have trouble. I get my little pick, and I grab right in there, and I kind of, I, I pull up. Get one side started, go to the other side, pull up, get it started, and then I take the flat of it and push that in there. Just like that. Beautiful job. A lot of times, something like that, when you try to do a lot of video, don't work out too good. And then my fuel line, or I mean my uh, uh, throttle cable, I pull it down. There's a little groove in your uh, throttle cable holder. You get your cable through it. Just kind of push that up gently into it. Open your throttle wide open. Put your ball in. Oh, missed it. Check for full throttle operation. We got full throttle. Get your air impulse line started on. Kind of a good idea, especially if you're putting a new line, make sure you don't have any kinks. Uh, it can give you fits tuning if you got the right kind of kink. If you have trouble getting these on, just a little bit of mix oil. Put it in the end of your tube, you know, on your finger, just a little tiny bit. And that's all you got to have, but there, we got all of them. Okay, the choke's over on the other bench, and I'm not going to grab it, the choke rod, but it, uh, maybe I will, maybe I won't. See, make sure I wasn't forgetting something there. I like to run these with two strokes. Feels good. Feels real good. Put his plug in.
from here, about that tight. This one has already been taken care of. These are uh, older XPs. The they wear right here in the wire. A lot of people put a little black tape on them. Well, it's also a good idea to take a Dremel and open up that filter or that top just a little bit if you see that problem so that there's room for that to fit in there and it's not rubbing. That's it right there. Okay, from this point right here, it's pretty simple. Uh, what we're doing is we're just just continuing on with what we've got going on. Uh, I've got the handle put on, the muffler. Uh, we have a plate here. I think I've got it in here somewhere. It goes on with it. So we'll dig this out. We'll clean that up. These go on different than you think. The little map tab goes to the left side of the saw and toward the front. So it sits just like that. See your bed? That's the way you put it on. And then you put your muffler. Your gasket goes on this side. Okay? They're supposed to seal up to that metal plate. Sometimes you get one that's... Uh, you got a uh, muffler that's got a warp flange. I'll go ahead and put a gasket on the other side. I ain't afraid. Not not of that anyway. I have other things that scare me. Uh, I'm afraid of no man. But I'll tell you what I am afraid of. I'm afraid of my little world going to hell and me not being able to do about it, anything about it someday. So far, I control my own circumstances. You know, some days it's debatable whether I'm successful or not. But so far I am. Them screws are just a little bit bigger. I'll tell you another thing we need to put on too right now. I'm going to do that first. Uh, this is a good time for me to do this. My old handlebar spring. Get that on. I kind of like doing videos like this a lot. Because uh, they're, they're fairly simple. But I'm going to tell you. You can build ten saws right in a row. And everything goes so good. You wouldn't believe it. But sometimes. Because it's on video. Something will fight with you. Or you'll miss it. And you guys don't miss nothing. Good for you. It's like. Well hey Arv you said this. You did that. Yeah, I know, except for this time. Or, oh, did you see that cat up on that bench? That's kind of cute. I didn't know there was a cat up there. Okay. There's no cat in here right now. Uh, I, uh, this spring, decided they didn't need to be in here. Uh, I felt sorry for them during the winter. I burned the stove behind me on coal. And, uh, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to let a couple of them just know we love them. Okay, let me gather up my parts and we'll put this muffler on. I went ahead and uh, I had something I had to do. Uh, time flies when you're having fun, right? So we came back in a couple hours. And the reason I mentioned that is because I already said that the engine assembly silicone's got to set for a bit. Well, I didn't want you to think I was going to fire a saw right up right away. I'll tell you what I did. I got my muffler on. It's all on. Everything's buttoned up. I put the handle on. And I had to go rummage around for a new choke rod. His had one tab broke off, and I didn't want that. Because I put it in, and it popped right back out. So I went in on the other side, and I got one. And, uh... We're going to give this a real quick attempt. If it fires right up, you'll hear it first here. If it don't, we'll see it on another video. So we're I'll just do it right from jump. Now, I set my uh, low jet at one turn out plus just a little, maybe an eighth at the most. My high jet at one turn out. 
from seated. So that's generally where I set them. Well, let's see what it does. I And I didn't have much gas. I had just a dribble, so they might not want to pick this gas up. I might have to go mix up some more. Oh. That's unbelievable. There, that is just unfucking believable. Straight away, set, it fired the second pole. I didn't expect that. That normally would take about six, eight, but it fired once in a while. That happens. I did not put gas on that uh, air horn. I did not. And it wants to run right where it is. Yeah, they sound like a dirt bike, don't they? With that pipe. Well, with the with the port work that we do to these, for people that are really cutting. If I know you're playing a firewood and cutting cookies, you get different timing numbers than if I know you're out there balls deep in logs and tree work. Uh, uh, this, uh, this saw here is going to a tree guy. So he, I wanted solid and rugged and uh, numbers like I use. You know, what I like to see. There's this is a log and saw. But if I even get a hint that you ain't logging, you get a different build. What you get is you get a little faster opening on your exhaust and maybe just a little more on the intake too. Uh, so I'll stretch that out a little bit. Make some ringy zingy when you're cutting smaller stuff. But you lose torque doing that. So instead of putting on 96 or 97, 98, something like that, this saw is running on 101, okay, on the exhaust. And, uh... A fairly conservative 155 totally total intake opening. That means when the piston skirt starts to break to when it comes back down, is 155 degrees on this saw. Um, you know what I do to the intakes. You've seen my little notch, done it to this one. You know, the two little notches in the rough, done it to this one. That first start, beautiful. A lot of first starts don't work out because there's something just a little goofy with that. And you got you got to work issues out slowly. And uh, I don't often do first starts. On, in fact, I think this is only like the third one I ever did on video. But I was in one of them screw it moments, honestly. I just, I said, you know, I got a feeling about this saw. Uh, and let's just see where this goes. Uh, it's set long enough now. I'll run heat six heat cycles through this, going easy. Uh, we'll give it a, just a little pull and just see. Uh, set my choke, push my choke in, gives me high idle. <laughs> See, that's the way they're supposed to do. Well, I gotta say one thing, Kyle. You got a heck of an oiler. Yes, you do. It's peeing on my bench. People, I really enjoy doing this stuff for you an awful lot. Um, we're gonna hit and miss here and there once in a while on videos. As long as you don't care, don't worry about me. I ain't going nowhere. I'll do everything I can. I really will. We got about six of these 372s to do. And uh, uh, 
any of you that I got your 372, trust me, the parts are here. It's in the lineup. We're going to go back to back. But somewhere in this game, I want to do a 390. I was talking to Tin Man. He's going to do one. And what we're going to do is when he gets his 390 to do, we're going to do this uh, together. Okay, that's it. Goodbye.